Taxonomy is the branch of science that identifies and categorizes organisms. So it puts, basically puts organisms into groups. And in taxonomy, scientists use a system called hierarchical classification. And that term hierarchical could help, you can remember what that means if you remember a hierarchy. And a hierarchy is a system where someone's in charge and then there are people that work under them and people that further work under those people. So you can think maybe about a king and a queen with their subjects and their servants. Um, you have a class system. And so this is sort of the same as that um, because we start out with broad classes that describe lots of different organisms and we slowly get more and more specific. So that's why it's called a hierarchical system. It has classes. All right. So in this system we have seven seven different groups. The biggest group, the most general group is a kingdom. From there we go down to phylum, which is a little more specific, and then to class, which is a little more specific than phylum, then to order, then to family, then to genus, and then to species. And species would be the most specific group within this system. So kingdom would include the largest number of organisms, species would include the fewest number of organisms. So we're getting more and more specific as we go down. Mm -hmm. To give you an example of how this works, this is a domestic dog, so its common name would just be dog. If we were going to sort it into each of these groups, it would fit into the kingdom Animalia. So the first part of its name would be Animalia. Um, and then we would go down to the next um, more specific group of phylum, and it would fit into the phylum Chordata. Now, if the kingdom Animalia includes all animals, the phylum Chordata includes just those animals that have a notochord, um, which is like the spinal column of an embryo when it's developing. So things you can think about that have sort of a backbone. So that's the phylum that the dog would fit into. It fits into the class Mammalia, so of all of those animals that have a spinal column, only the mammals would be fitting into this class, so we're getting more and more specific as we go. Um, and mammals would include anything from mice um, all the way up to whales. Whales are also mammals, so a, still a large number of organisms. The order that the dog would fit into is the order Carnivora, um, and this would include all mammals that eat meat, they're carnivores. So that's things like polar bears or cats, um, anything that's a carnivore. The family that the, do that the dog would fit into is the family Canidae, um, and this is getting even more specific. It includes things like foxes um, and all the different kinds of dogs you can think of, like wolves um, and jackals and coyotes. The genus that the um, dog fits into is the genus Canis, which includes only dog-like organisms, things like wolves and coyotes. And finally, the species that this dog fits into is Lupus familiaris. Um, and Lupus, it, the Latin there means wolf, but it's got a subspecies familiaris to make sure we're only talking about domestic dogs. So um, our actual species is just Lupus, which would also include wolves. but if we just say lupus familiaris, we're now talking about all domestic dogs. And so this is the way that scientists would classify this dog. And it's a much more precise way of classifying organisms than just to say a dog. So if you think about it, if I had to say all of those different classifications to talk about a dog, that's not a very efficient system. It's kind of difficult um, to, to go through all of those names every time I want to bring up a dog. Um, so Carl von Linnaeus is a Swedish scientist who came up with this system called binomial nomenclature. And binomial nomenclature is just a shortened version of that classification system where each of the organisms has two names. Binomial means two names. The first name that they're given is the genus name and the second name is the species name. So this saves us from having to list all of those different classifications for every organism. We only now have to have two names. So the way that the uh, system writes these names is by using a genus name, which is going to be capitalized and italicized. So the genus name is always capitalized, just like you capitalize your first name, you always capitalize the genus name. And then the species name is going to be lowercase and italicized. And this is going to be um, an example of the species name lupus familiaris. So it's lowercase, unlike the genus name. 
So if we wanted to write out the scientific name for this dog, it would be Canis lupus familiaris, and we're including the subspecies familiaris in there too. Most of the time you'll just have the two names, but if you include the subspecies, it actually does make three words. So this is how we would identify that dog. And it's much more precise um, and universal because these names are in Latin, and so no matter where you go, they'll be the same words. It doesn't have to be translated from language to language. Scientists over in Germany and scientists in um, India, no matter what language they speak, would all call this dog Canis lupus familiaris. So it makes it much easier for the scientific community to communicate. All right, one more thing that we need to point out um, in this lesson is the definition of a species. So a species is defined as organisms that can produce fertile offspring. And you can think about a species basically like um, any group of similar organisms. So all dogs are of the same species, all um, lions are of the same species, all tigers are of the same species. So if we, um, to, to sort of make a point here to, so that you know the difference between a species and something that's not a species, if we took a male lion and a female tiger and, and bred the two of them, they would actually be able to produce offspring. However, their offspring, which they would produce, um, which would be called a liger, a liger can't actually have any offspring. It's sterile. And so because they can reproduce an offspring, but the offspring itself can't further reproduce, the liger is not actually a species, and the tiger and the lion are both separate species. If they could produce fertile offspring, if the liger could reproduce, then the lion and the tiger would be of the same species. But because they can't do that, they're not of the same species. And one little interesting note here, it has to be a male tiger, I'm sorry, a male lion and a female tiger to produce a liger. If you had a female lion and a male tiger, you would actually produce a different organism. It would look very different, um, and it's called a tiglon. So ligers actually are very interesting um, organisms. They're, they're the biggest of all the land cats that you're going to find, and so it's kind of interesting that a lion and a tiger can produce an offspring that's actually larger in size than either of them.